As we've been hearing on the show this morning, 19,000 patients waited in A&E for more than three days in the 12 months to March. It comes as Labour claims the crisis also extends to dentistry, which plans for an overhaul which would see an, an extra 700,000 urgent dental appointments a year. And Shadow Secretary for Health, Wes Streeting, is with us now. I mean, the, the A&E situation, Wes Streeting, is absolutely incredible. Mm. We had an acute consultant on earlier who referred to it as a national crisis. National emergency. Uh, and a national emergency. <sighs> Can you really fix this, even if you were there in one, for one term, which is five years? Realistically, isn't it time to be realistic with the people at home right now and tell them what's coming? Good morning. I, I think we can fix it, and I would be honest about the fact that it will take time, but I, I genuinely think that within one term of a Labour government, we can get the NHS back to meeting the standards that it sets for itself, which are important standards because they do impact and relate directly to patient safety. And we've got a plan to do it, whether that's 40,000 more appointments every week to cut NHS waiting lists, training up thousands more GPs and cutting through red tape so people can see a GP instead of ending up uh, in A&E, doubling the number of scanners so we can diagnose people earlier and treat faster. You know, if people look at our manifesto and the plans we're setting out of this election, any one of those policies would make a real difference. Taken together, they represent a serious foundation, not just to get our NHS back on its feet, but to make sure it's fit for the future and there for all of us when we need it again. But frankly, the, you know, these scenes and what we're seeing in our hospitals is frankly shameful. And it's why the Prime Minister and his Health Secretary do not want to talk about the NHS in this election when, in fact, they should be on the okay. airwaves, apologising well, to people. Let, let's, let's focus on your plans, because one. Of, I tell you something, we're streeting, one of the things the voters don't like is when political parties start to talk about the other parties. So let's leave that to them. Let's talk about your plans. Uh, the Nuffield Trust think tank says that your manifesto uh, implies an increase of 1.1% in funding uh, for the NHS, which would represent a low, lower level of funding increase than the period of austerity that we experienced. It would be an unprecedented slowdown in NHS finances. The other question is, where is the money coming from at all to pay? And why haven't you pledged to spend more? Yeah, I mean, the two questions are directly linked. I mean, we know that it's not just the public finances that are in a mess, it's also family finances. And what we're not prepared to do is what the last Labour government was able to do, actually, which is to say, well, well don't worry, we'll put a penny on national insurance and that okay, will fund so the how NHS because you we know for it? people can't afford it. The £2 billion we've spelled out in our manifesto is funded through a combination of uh, clamping down on tax avoidance and closing non-DOM loopholes. And that raises the £2 billion that we need to fund 40,000 more appointments, double the number of scanners, okay, 700,000 emergency just... dentistry appointments, yep. mental health support... OK, only in every... if you get it. <laughs> it. It only funds that if you get it. And tax avoidance is some... I mean, th you're not talking about people who are illegally avoiding tax. You're talking about people who have set up mechanisms in order to legally avoid tax. So you have to unpick all of that. And you also have to have a huge number of staff to investigate that, which is going to cost a lot of money as well. I mean, that is a long-term plan. We're talking about people facing life-threatening waits in A&E today. Well, our 40,000 more appointments, we can get up and running very quickly using an approach that's tried and tested at the London Hospital I could see from my office in Westminster, where on a single Saturday, because of the way they're organising their clinics, they can get through as many procedures as they would normally do in a normal working week. And that, that's the argument I've been making throughout this election, is that investment does matter, but so does reform. And I think people working in the NHS, people using it, can also see examples of waste, inefficiency, ways of doing things better that not only are better for patients, but also better for taxpayers. So that's the approach we'll take. You're right to say when it comes to tax avoidance, by the way, that you do need to make sure that you've got the tax inspectors and you've got the modern systems there. And, and that's exactly what Labour's committed to 
in our manifesto because we, we want to make sure that the promises we make are promises that we yeah, keep. But what I'm talking about the is the fact afford. that the A&E crisis, the waiting lists, the national emergency of the NHS, if you get into the job you want, Secretary of State, State for Health, you're going to have to start the moment you hit the ground. And it, it, recruiting tax specialists in order to unpick complex tax avoidance schemes is not something that's going to provide money right away. Um, the other issue you're going to have, if you get in, is the junior doctor's strike. They're going to strike in a couple of days' time. Are you going to uh, offer them, if you can, a deal? Yeah, so two, two things. I, I think, as I say, we can get the 40,000 more appointments up and running well within the first year. Rachel Reeves, the Shadow Chancellor, and I have already been working together, and I've been working with NHS leaders on the front line to make sure we've got a plan that's ready to go, using things that are tried and tested in a small number of hospitals, but rolling it out across the NHS. So that, won't, what, and that won't cost anything at all? No, as I say, the 40,000 more appointments are, are funded. They're fully costed and fully funded. From but what? the approach, But the approach... From what? The, funded from where? I, I, well, I've, I've already spelled out, and the manifesto spells out, from closing the non-DOM loopholes, clamping down on tax avoidance... <laughs> Uh, and, you know, those, Mr. This, Mr. these are all... We've just pointed out that's Mr. long Street, term. Susanna's it's just not, pointed out... Not, it, of course it's, it's long, long term. term. Come on. And, look, tax avoiders, that's what they do. They avoid tax. So you're going to have to try and convince quite a lot of them to suddenly start paying tax. And we also know, financial analysts will tell you, that in anticipation of that, a lot of them are already leaving and putting their tax affairs certainly somewhere else. And even the wealthy people who are paying tax here are thinking of leaving. It's such a long-term strategy. Mm. Isn't it time you just be honest? You know, you, you talk about bringing in integrity back to politics. And I think people at home can see straight through this. Isn't it time to be absolutely honest and, and explain where some of this money is coming from? We're hearing from Mark France, Director of Welfare at Nuffield Tr Foundation. He has said, both about yourselves and the Conservatives, actually, there's just simply not enough detail about where these cuts in public services are going to come from, because they're going to have to come from somewhere, Mr Streeting, and we're not getting any real information from you. Uh, the, the honesty is contained in the hard choices that we've made and the fact that lots of people have called for Labour to do more, to spend more, to spend money the country doesn't have, and we're not prepared to do it. There's your honesty. And as I've said in relation to the NHS, and, you know, the 40,000 more appointments is a really good example because it's about taking an approach that's been tried and tested in a small number of hospitals and taking it across the NHS, because the NHS has more pilots than the RAF and we'd be doing a really good job if we just took things that are working really well in a small number of places and funded them to run right across the NHS. That's the sort of approach that we're, that we're going to take. And, and I've also said it is going to take time. I wish I could wave a Labour magic how, wand. How long and... will it take? I, I just, just quick, how long will it take? For somebody now who, who votes you in next week, you're, how long would they have to wait? If they're waiting at the moment 18 months, we've heard, for kidney operations, how long will they have to wait under a Labour government? Within the first term of a Labour government, so five years, I think we can get NHS performance standards back to the 18-week standard that the NHS sets for itself. It's going to be hard. It's an ambitious goal, but I think we've got a serious plan to do it. I can't wave a ma magic wand and fix all the problems overnight, and, and I think people know that, and, and I'm honest about the fact that, you know, you vote us in on July the 4th, we're not going to be seeing um, a miracle by the first week or the first month, but we can make serious progress, and I just really urge people to give change a chance and, even more importantly, vote for it, because I know there's this sort of you know, conservative line at the moment that says, oh, Labour's going to win anyway, you've already won. I've been speaking to millions of undecided voters. I'm sure you've been picking this up from your viewers as well. Not, you know, there are millions of votes still to be cast in this general election. You only get change if you vote for it. And I, I okay. just urge people to remember, we've got a record on this. The shortest waiting time is the highest patient satisfaction in history. We did it before. With your support, we can do it again. Right. Wes Streeting, uh, Labour Shadow Secretary for Health and Social Care, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Do you think he's really been speaking to millions? <laughs> no. Millions of he's, voters? He's, he's spoken to some people at one hospital in London. No, no, no. No, I'm yeah. not talking about no. hospitals. Yeah, I'm just no. talking about can you actually get out <laughs> and knock on millions of doors? No, well, yeah. Um, let us know, though, what you think of Labour's plans for the NHS and your experience of the NHS. It is a huge issue in this election. It's one of... 
you know, probably the top three or four. So really Along with the challenge. cost of living, of course, nobody's got a magic wand, mm. but are you satisfied with the service that's currently being provided or how it might change? Let us know.